A presentation on non-traditional machining. So this course is primarily designed to teach non-conventional machining. But before starting with non-conventional machining, it is very important to understand the meaning of conventional machining and the main difference between conventional and non-conventional machining. This is Gurraj Singh. So this talk is going to cover a few basic concepts of conventional machining. First of all, we shall discuss what is machining. Then we shall discuss about the different materials that can be machined. Very importantly, we will be discussing the general components of any conventional machining setup. And lastly, we would discuss the conventional machining process classification which would help us identify that which process falls under which category. So what is machining? Now machining, as we all know, is basically the removal of material from the workpiece. So from any workpiece, you are removing the material. So machining is the process of using cutting tools to remove some amount of a piece of a material. Now this material, it can be wood, it can be metal, it can be plastic or it can be ceramic. Although in our courses we primarily focus on metals, but machining can be performed on any of the available materials. And this is the use of physical action of cutting tools and this is also known as subtractive manufacturing. Now, why do we call it as subtractive manufacturing? Because we are removing some material from the original material. For example, in case of turning, in this particular case of milling process, we are removing some material in the form of chips. So this is called as subtractive manufacturing. The primary machines used in machining are lathe, milling, a drill press, or abrasive grinders, or there are many other machines like a shaper, a planer, and many other different types of machines which are used for removing material. And the basic method of metal removing process is that it removes the material and decreases the metal mass. So as we progress through a machining process, the material from the workpiece, it gets removed and the overall mass or the overall weight of the workpiece, it gets reduced. But what are we adding? We are reducing the weight, but we are adding value. So we are adding value through this machining process because the raw form of that workpiece is not usable to us for any particular application. But once we remove a certain amount of material and give it a proper shape, then it becomes usable in any particular application as a part of an automobile or as a part of any other machine. So it can now be used and therefore some value has been added to that workpiece. So what do machine shops normally do? Now we have machine shops in any manufacturing facility. Now what is done in these machine shops? So first of all, these machine shops, they are used to create tools and parts. So they, they create different types of equipment and they use different equipment to create certain tools or certain parts which are used in other machines. These parts need to be strategically cut using high level of accuracy to fit their specific function and fit the machine they will be used in. So now they need to be cut using a very strong strategy and a very high level of accuracy because they need to be fit on another assembly. And in order to fit a part in an assembly, you need to size that part so that it can fit with all the other components. It can, it can match within that family of other parts in which it's going to function now. So therefore, it is very important to have a very high level of accuracy. And that is given using these machining processes. So the machinists, they remove material from objects that are made of metal through machining techniques 
but they can also be used on wood, ceramic and plastic materials. So we've already discussed this in the previous slide that you don't only machine metals, you can machine all different sorts of materials. And certain applications of machinings, they include machining on automobile parts like engines, for bicycles, for appliances, then for other kinetic or mechanical objects. And there are infinite applications of machining in the industry. So now we would like to focus on what metals can be machined. So all different metals, now I'm talking directly of metals because we would be focusing on metals in this particular course. So there are different metals which are available in the industry which are used for making different components. And the most commonly used ones are steel, aluminium, brass, titanium, copper, etc. So stainless steel, what is it commonly used for? It is used for precision machining and offering the advantages of strength and resistance to corrosion. So anywhere, if you need these advantages, strength and resistance to corrosion, you would be using stainless steel as the material. Now, in some cases, you need lightweight parts and that is fulfilled by aluminium. So it is inexpensive because it is abundantly available and it is light in weight and easy to work with. So better machinability. It is very easy to machine aluminium. Then brass. So brass is another economical metal that is used for machining, but it should not be used in semiconductor products because zinc and tin are there in brass. So therefore it cannot be used in semiconductor products. Now when I talk about strong materials, we have titanium now. Titanium is strong, resistant to corrosion and light in weight. So it has these three very very important properties in a very good combination. But the problem here is it is very difficult to machine. So it would require certain high strength cutting tools like diamond tools or CBN tools. So it would require different types of tools. Copper, it is a versatile and strong metal and it is normally used in the applications where you need more electrical conductivity. And lastly, as I told earlier, plastics can also be machined and there are different ways in which plastic machining is done. So now what are the components of a conventional machining setup? I am talking of conventional machining setup because conventional machining are those machining methods where you are directly sharing the workpiece using a cutting tool. So the tool and the workpiece are directly in contact. So all your conventional machining processes like turning, milling, reaming, boring, etc. They come under conventional machining. Now all these setups, they have certain things in common. Although there are different ways in which the tool moves and the workpiece is moved in all these different setups. But you will have certain things which are common. So what are those components? First of all, each conventional setup will have a work holding device. It will have a tool holding device, a work motion mechanism, a tool motion mechanism and a support structure. So we would be looking at all these things one by one. So first of all, let us take a look at the work holding devices. Now when I talk about work holding devices, I mention all those parts which are used for holding the workpiece on any particular conventional machining setup. So for example, if I talk about lathe, you have the chucks, the three jaw chucks, you have the collet chucks, then you have different types of vices, jigs, fixtures, so they're all common work holding devices. So what do these work holding devices do? They are used to locate, support and secure the work pieces during any such process like machining. So in a wide variety or wide range of applications, these typical devices are employed for the majority of work holding. So if you know all these devices like chucks, collets, vices, jigs and fixtures, these are commonly used in, I would say, 90% of the work holding applications. And for efficient, safe and high quality part production, the operators who know how to operate these work holding devices are needed. 
So therefore, uh, you need some level of technical expertise in the operator to operate these work holding devices. And when used correctly, it increases the production speed while also improving the part tolerance as well as the part finish. So it is very important to be able to work with these work holding devices. Then we would discuss the two holding devices. Now, as the workpiece is held on a particular device, similarly, every machine tool, it uses a two holding device that is used for holding the cutting tool. So the machine is held in position by a tool holder, which is the machining component. And the aims to keep the tool as precise and firmly in position as possible because even a small increase in runout might destroy your job. So therefore the tool holding device must be able to hold the tool in a very very precise, tight and efficient manner. And even a small movement which is not required by us, it can damage the workpiece, it can damage the overall finish of the workpiece. And the runout and balance of different types of holders, they vary. So there's also a difference in how long they last and how durable they are. Then we would see the different tool and work relative motion mechanisms. Now if you take a look at these two images, to the right you have a turning setup. So you can see that a chuck is holding the workpiece and the tool which is held eventually on a carriage which is moving on the lathe bed is moving linearly and it is removing material from the rotating workpiece. While in case of the shaping machine, you have a Whitworth's quick return mechanism where the tool is reciprocating on a workpiece that is held here on a vice. So you can see you have a tool holder, you have a workpiece holder in both these cases. So both these cases, they use a tool holder as you can see here and here you can see a tool on the lathe as well as a workpiece holder which is a chuck in this case and a vice in the case of a shaper. Similarly, you have other setups. For example, to the right you have a milling setup. So you have the workpiece which can be held on this table and the tool which is held on this tool holder. And similarly, you have a drilling setup. So this is a drilling machine where your workpiece is held on this table while the tool is held on this tool holding device at the top. So now we would like to classify the different machining processes. So conventional machining specifically, although we would be discussing non-conventional machining in this course, but conventional machining where the workpiece and the tool are directly in contact, it is split up into two types, rotating type and reciprocating type. So when I talk about the rotating type cutting processes, where we use a rotating cutter, all the processes including milling, fly cutting, drilling, pouring, reaming and grinding. We would be discussing each of these in detail in the coming classes. So all of these, they come under the rotating type, rotating cutter processes. When I talk about rotating workpiece, so all the processes which are related to your lathe machine or the turning process, they come under the rotating workpiece process like turning. So all the related processes like threading, grooving, parting and spinning, they come under the rotating workpiece process. And when I talk about reciprocating type, so when I reciprocate the cutter, it is called as normally shaping process or slotting process. And when I reciprocate the workpiece, it is called as planing process. There are certain other processes which, are, which can also be included here. Which, would, which we would be mentioning later on, like hobbing or the super finishing process. So we would be discussing all these processes in detail in the coming lecture. And once we are finished with all the conventional machining processes, with a basic introduction of these processes, we would be moving over to the non-conventional machining part. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you.